All right, guys, this is Steve here with the Ultimate Pickup Artist Convention. Can you guys hear me? Chat I can hear you. All right, great. Like I said, this is Steve with the Ultimate Pickup Artist Convention, and on the phone I got with me Darren, DJ Fuji, old-time friend. We've been in the game a while. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself, uh, DJ Fuji, Darren. What do you want me to call you, man, Darren? Yeah, whatever, dude. Either okay. I just kind of go by everything. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, so Steve and I actually go way back. We've uh we've kind of you know done the teaching thing together, the sergeant thing together, everything. Um, so as most of you guys know, I'm a uh, dating coach. Um, I specialize. It's a little, what I teach is a little bit different from the kind of the normal thing because uh, we're all about growth and dev- personal development. So uh, it's not. I don't, yes, part of that is about tactically being able to walk up, approach, attract, seduce the whole nine yards. But the other part of that is your growth as a person has a is a big big factor in that. So I don't want to mask your flaws with lines or mask your flaws with little tricks here and there. Not that there's anything wrong with the tactics, but I want the tactics to instead teach you uh, to become a better person, to become a more attractive person, and then that stuff will start to come out naturally, uh, and it'll it'll start to complement your overall personality and your overall persona uh, that's that's grown from the training. Great. So here's how it's going to work, guys. If you want to talk to Darren or you want to ask me a question, you're going to have to push star two because everybody's on mute right now. Star two raises your hand, and then I will uh, announce the last four of your phone number or your Skype address, and then you can go ahead and ask your question after I unmute you. So right now, if you have a question, go ahead and push star two on your phone. That will notify me you have a question, and then I'll unmute you. There's actually a lot of um, – before we if, – if the guys are still kind of come formulating questions, I'll talk a little bit about um, you know some of the things that I see. Uh, in fact, I just posted something on Facebook uh, earlier today, and it's funny. I haven't, I haven't replied to it yet because I want to know – kind of see what everyone, what everyone is, uh, is going to reply with. I asked, you know, true or false, uh, the purpose of qualification, the main purpose is to – screen the girl for, you know, what you, uh, to see if she meets your standards, right? And the reason I ask that is because so many people think that's true. Like the vast majority of all the people commenting are like, oh, I even have some like people that teach this. They're like, oh yeah, that's true. No, it's, it's about, it's about making sure she meets your standards. And it's like, no, it's not. It's not even close. Like that's an element of it, but that's not the main point of it. And I ask those questions. I, I challenge those things because I want people to understand there's so much out there that you don't know, and that's hurting you. Uh, it's like anything else. Like if you're an amateur basketball player and you're not shooting the ball correctly, right? So like one of my friends is really good at basketball. And one of the first times he saw me shoot, he was like, dude, your elbow has to point towards the basket. Your elbow is pointing out, like out to the right of the basket. What that means is that your shot's never going to be on. I didn't know that because I'm not a great basketball player. Not knowing that, and, and if you think about it, how many things don't also don't I know that are also affecting, say, my shot or my passes or whatever – Uh, All of those things, if I wanted to be good at it or if I wanted to be competitive with it, all those things are hurting. So in the case of qualification, that's not what it's about. Qualification is about telling her why you like her for more than her looks. Not about screening her, not about seeing what's cool about her, uh, not about seeing if she meets your standards, none of that crap. It's about telling her why you like her. So it's a lot of misinformation. So if you have questions, guys have questions about that type of stuff um, or the questions on – you know, it's hard. Uh, I know. I realize it's hard to come up with questions on things you don't know, right, or things that you're not aware of. But if you have questions on topics that seem like they don't make sense, or that they, uh, that they, um, they're kind of murky. It's like, wait, how does this work? Or so and so said this, and then so and so said that, and they seem to contradict. That's this is now the time to uh, to clear that stuff up. Also, if you have like a sticking point or something, you know, uh, go ahead and ask that kind of question. Because I know the first call we had, um, I'm kind of really known as really direct. In fact, one, one time we were in Vegas, I made uh, Darren go sexual direct. <laughs> that was the first time. <laughs> <Yeah>. Right. <laughs> yep. And then on um, the call, the first call we had, um, you know, Brad P said he doesn't he doesn't uh, advocate going direct at all. Well, I can see his point, but there's things that you must do after you go to direct to not look like you're kissing her ass. So I can see his point, but there's there's a few things that you know, like Darren was saying, that that's left out. That you're not. He saying he seeing. never goes direct. He says he doesn't advocate going direct. Yes. For what reason? Because it doesn't work for guys unless they're good looking. 
no, that's bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> obviously. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> Unless I suddenly became good looking. <laughs> it doesn't. It, here's the thing. Like, there's. A, I think there's a big difference between um, if whether something works and whether something is good for you, right? So, like, right. yeah, direct may not work for you a large percentage of the time if your body language is fucked up and you're coming in passive and you know you have horrible clothing, whatever. But it still might be good for you. Right in terms of like your development, what a lot of people guys don't realize is that they're looking for the technique that's going to get them the best girl or get them the most girls, and not the technique that's going to get them the most girls in a year or in two years. Who's going to get them better? People are always focused on how do I get the girl, not on how do I get better. And if you play any kind of competitive sport, activity, uh, chess, video games, anything, the top players are always say the intermediate guys, the amateurs are always trying to win the game. They're not trying to get better at the sport. Or trying to get better at the game, and that's the thing—the thing that really separates the the guys that get really good at this from the guys that just kind of screw around and and uh, you know they're always at that intermediate or amateur level—is they don't take it seriously on skill development. And on Reddit to, uh, yesterday, they had a um, an interview with a, a guy named Daigo. He's this Japanese video game player, and he's like probably the best in the world, or one of the best at least. And uh, I remember on his interviews, he all like you, he's talking about video games, right? Like fighting games, like Street Fighter. It's funny because you you hear him talking about it, and you're like, that's not video games. That's like that's dating or that's sports or that's other stuff because it's the same principles. And what he says is that guys are always focused on trying to win, and that's not how you get better. You get better by focusing on how to get better. So that would be like you know trying to focus on winning the basketball game as opposed to focusing on getting better at basketball. If you only play pickup games in basketball and you only go out and try to score the most points, you're not actually working on getting better at the game. So sure, you might win that pickup game, maybe, right? You might win more pickup games than you would if you were practicing, say, a layup or practicing uh, driving into the hoop, even though the guys are bigger than you, taller than you, and they might block you. Sure, you might make more points by just throwing it up outside, but you're not working on getting to the hoop. And if you can't get to the hoop doesn't really matter like how good you are outside at some point you're gonna you're gonna be punished because you don't have that skill set and so a lot of guys don't really they don't really realize that the key to this is getting better not getting the girl tonight that's penny wise pound foolish gotcha makes sense all right let's go to our first caller uh blue green trees from skype go ahead and ask your question man uh, hello guys. Um, I wanted to ask about uh, compliments. Yeah, you gotta uh, speak up. You gotta yeah, speak you gotta, up. Yeah. You gotta speak up, dude. Turn your mic up and uh, turn your the volume on your voice up. Can you hear me now? Yeah. There you go. go. Okay. Yeah. Um, I have a question about compliments and about direct or indirect, and during a day game, because some tell you that you should uh, you should always go indirect, and some tell you just go direct. And um, some also tell you it's okay to start with a compliment, and some tell you you shouldn't, you should never do that. Mm-hmm. So, what? What should you do, right? You do, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Good, good question. Good question. Good question. Let me so, let me mute him real quick real so we don't get the echo. Okay. okay. Come back to you. All right. Go ahead. Okay. So, it's a really good question because there's so much conflicting advice here. Here's kind of how you reconcile this, right? In anything, in any type of scenario, right, there are no uh, hard and fast rules, assuming it's a broad scenario. It's not a very detailed scenario, right? Like, should you go direct or indirect at it, freaking, like, at work? Like, no, you should never go direct at work. Like, I can't think of a scenario where direct is a great idea at work unless you are the boss, right? Even then, you get sued for sexual harassment. So even then, it's not great, right? If it's a very detailed scenario like that, okay, sometimes there's, yes, you should do this. If it's a broad scenario like day game or night game or whatever, there's no hard and fast rules because it entirely depends on the context. So I'll give you an example. Let's, and we're talking about day game, right? If a girl's walking down the street away from you and you chase her down to ask her what time it is or to ask her if she can give her opinion on whether men lie more or women lie more, that's going to be weird. First and foremost, I don't care how good your game is, that's weird. And she's going to notice that's weird because it's right in her face. And you're unlikely to get anywhere, and you're unlikely to learn anything because you're going up and weirding girls out because it doesn't make sense. So that's all about context, right? Conversely, 
if, uh, say, uh, there's a girl standing in front of you in line at Starbucks, and you go direct on her when you just happen to be standing in line, that's also weird because you're just like, hey, I saw you, and I had to come meet you. I think you're absolutely adorable, and she's like, you're standing behind me in line. Like it's weird, right? It's, it doesn't make sense in the context. So whether you go indirect or direct largely depends, at least from an efficacy standpoint, largely depends on context. It depends on what makes sense in the right scenario, right? In day game, moving sets, generally speaking, you're going to want to open direct. If you have to chase them down, you probably want to open them direct, and you generally don't want to uh, open them head on. So if you're going in, this, in the same or the opposite direction, so they're going east or going west, right? You don't want to jump in front of them and stop them. A, because it's startling, and B, because it's like a head-on collision. You have her momentum and your momentum that you both have to stop. Instead, you walk past them, turn around after like three or four seconds, and chase them down. Again, now it goes from a head-on collision to a rear-end collision. What's more deadly? The head-on collision because you, you have both combined momentum. Right? If you slow her, if you turn around and you chase her down, when you're chasing her down, all you have to do is slow down and stop, and she will slow down and stop. It's a much more gradual, a much gentler way of stopping the girl and creating an interaction. So in day game, generally, you want to go direct if you're moving. Now, if you're not moving, if you're, uh, the girl happens to be standing next to you in line at a Starbucks or she happens to be sitting down next to you at a food court or something, something where you're in an environment and you're not moving, and especially if she's not moving away from you, that's when you want to go situational, generally speaking. Now, situational can be indirect as well. Generally, you don't want to go throw a ton of interest right there. So let's say you're sitting down next to a girl at a plane, right? You just happen to be sitting next to a cute girl. Don't generally go direct there. Because it's weird, it's like awkward, it, it depends on what opener you use to, but it's unnecessary. You don't need to go direct there. The only time I tell you to break that rule is if you're deathly afraid of direct and indirect is easy for you. If you can do indirect and you can know you can do it, fine, go direct and do it because it scares you. And generally the things that scare you are the things that you need the most. They're the things that will make you grow the most. So, But aside from those scenarios, direct you want to go when you're chasing somebody down. And when you're in the same vicinity and people aren't moving, that's when you want to go indirect. Uh, and that's kind of the, the general you should go by. Does that make sense? Uh, yes, makes a lot of sense. Thanks. Okay. Did you have another question or a follow-up to that? Um, yeah, about compliments. If I start, um, should I ever, or let's say, when should I use compliments as, a, as an opener or not? Okay. okay. So when you go direct, generally you want to compliment as the – remember, direct is direct interest, right? So in the day game, it's I thought you were adorable. I had to come meet you. Don't say I had to come say hi because then she'll say hi and then walk away. I had to come meet you. The wording you, that you're going to use is pretty important. Um, don't use hot. Use adorable because hot is played out. Everybody says it. Now, keep in mind this is country to country. So there's going to be some countries where, I don't know, maybe adorable is played out and hot's not. So, but if, so if that applies, switch out the words accordingly. What we found in most Western cult, uh, cultures is adorable tends to work better than hot, beautiful, gorgeous, whatever. A lot of that is because of the stigma associated with certain words, right? So gorgeous tends to be used, even though it means roughly the same, gorgeous is used well, like construction workers that are like whistling at girls, you know what I mean? It's used in a kind of a sleazy manner, so it's associated with a sleazy pickup, right? Whereas adorable, it's more almost naive. It's more childlike. So it's seen as a much more genuine opener because the wording itself is, seems to be more genuine. So don't discount the stigma attached to an individual word. Same thing as influence or manipulation. They're roughly the same meaning. They're roughly synonymous. One sounds really bad, and the other one sounds, eh, okay, maybe I could do it, right? In this case, you know, manipulation sounds really bad. Influence sounds like, okay, that's doable, right? They mean the same thing. So keep stigma in, uh, in mind when you do that. So when you go direct, you're going to open with that compliment. Don't stack directly to another compliment. So don't say, hey, you're adorable. I had to come meet you. Oh, my God, I love your shoes. You're really pretty. I think you're really smart. Like, don't stack compliments. Start right with the direct opener with – you're adorable. I had to come meet you. Go directly into introductions. So right there, give her, uh, give her your hand and say, my name is Darren or whatever your name is. Right? Don't ask for her name because that's needy. 
So just give her your hand and say, and this is day game, right? My name is Darren. She'll give you her name. From there, you can go off into your next thing. Usually what you want to do off that is go off of some sort of association on that. The easiest thing to do that I, that I have all of my guys go and start with when they're starting day game is just make a comment about her name because it's super easy, right? Um, if you don't know what comment to make, then start with you look like a whatever her name is or you don't look like a whatever her name is. So let's say you walk up to a girl, right? And you say – the standard opener, right? You shake hands with her. You say, my name's Darren. She says, my name's Ashley, right? And she's like super Asian, right? Now, in your head, does Ashley look super Asian to you? Now, maybe in your area, maybe it does. In my area, that's not Ashley. Maybe that's a Jennifer. Maybe that's a Melissa. Maybe that's a Janet. That's not, a, that's not at, in any way, shape, or form in LA and Ashley. That's weird, right? So what am I going to say after that? Wow, I never would have predicted Ashley at all. Or you don't look like an Ashley at all. Because in my head, she doesn't. Now, if she did, let's say I said her name was Ashley, but she was blonde and she looked like a typical California girl, that would make sense. I'd be like, okay, you look like an Ashley. So the comment is very simple. You look like a whatever her name is, or you don't look like a whatever her name is. All you have to do is make up that decision one or the other and make sure it's true. Make sure it actually is what you think. Don't just do the same thing to every girl because and, – and just say, oh, you look like a Jennifer. You look like a Ashley. You look like a Mary. Don't just default to one because she's going to ask why. And if it's not true, you're going to have no idea. You're going to be like, uh, I don't know. So make sure it's true. If she says why I don't look like an Ashley because Ashley is not Asian girl. Ashley is blonde girl who's not that smart right? or blonde girl who's like into surfing or the beach or whatever, right? So you want to that, – that's a really easy way to transition now into conversations because then I can ask her, okay, do I look like a Darren? And then she's going to be like, no. And you're like, I know because Darren's a black name. I don't know why I got the name Darren, but it was weird. So then I can go off into that or how my parents name me or the fact that my sister's name is Brandy, which is a legitimate thing. So we both have black names. Now that's really weird, right? I, now I have this conversation. We can ask what her, what her siblings are named, right? Or does she, if she's Asian, right, does she have like an Asian name and then that's just her American name? Now we're in a conversation though, and it's an, it's an easy conversation because we're talking about things that, are, that, we're, that we're comfortable with, things that we're, that we're talking about normally. And it's not as forced like let me bombard her with questions and ask her more about herself and interrogate her, and then she's awkward and doesn't know what to say, and then it's weird. Like you want to get into a normal conversation as soon as you can. So that's a, that's a quick way to get into that, to jump into that without bombarding with compliments and without interrogating her. And that's, that's the big thing. Most guys, whether it's day game, night game, whatever, most guys tend to default to interrogation. Nobody likes to be interrogated. Um, one of the, uh, another coach, uh, Gareth actually said, he had this quote, it's a great quote. He's like, girls don't get all dolled up, dressed up, put on all kinds of hot stuff to go out at night and to answer questions because that's an interrogation and nobody likes to be interrogated. So instead, go out and make statements. Go out and talk about the things that you're into, and that's how you're going you're gonna to start that conversation. That's how you're going to lead to something more. Does that make sense? Uh, yes, it does. Thanks a lot. Okay, cool. Okay, All, right. Cool. All, right. All right, man. I'm going to meet you, and uh, if we have another question later, uh, be sure to raise your hand. All right, guys, if you have another question, if anything came up during that conversation, you got a sticking point, something pressing, you got a date tonight, and you want some advice, go ahead and push star two on your phone to raise your hand, and we will take your question. Uh, one other comment I want to make is uh, I've learned over, um, you know, doing a lot of direct is, is, is that one thing you don't, you don't want to use those compliments like beautiful and hot and all that. I kind of tend to temper it down a little bit and use something that's kind of it's complimentative, but it's also kind of teasing. So I so I'll either say adorable or I like her shoes or you got a you know you got a nice little walk, but I won't go over the top with hot or beautiful, especially not beautiful. That's just something you know, as they say, uh, chode use. All right, got a Skype caller. First uh, word is Mariano. Go ahead and ask your question, man. What's up, guys? Do you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yep. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, all right. Uh, hi, Darren. Nice to meet you, man. Nice to follow you, too, you on Facebook. Great stuff, man. Thank you. So, uh, here goes the question that I have um, been dealing like a couple of weeks ago. 
Um, I have this thing with a, a friend of mine. He's actually my wingman, all right? Mm -hmm. And we actually go a lot. I mean, we share uh, or I share uh, most of my social circles, all right? A lot of girls that I met and that I actually introduced those girls to this friend of mine. Mm -hmm. So um, seeing him as a wingman and not as a friend, I see that the social value that he adds to me is that actually he's a good looking guy. So girls come in, so he's easy going and that's it. Um, the, th the thing is that he constantly uh, rides on my back to get to girls that are, are my friends and that are girls that are with me and he's constantly hitting up on those girls and most of the times they are putting him down because he goes too strong. Mm -hmm. And right now, I mean, my question is, um, since, he, since he's a friend, if you had experienced that yourself before, like, you know, you're hanging out with your friend, he's also like a wingman, uh, most of the girls that you introduce to him, he actually ends up hitting on them and sometimes he's blowing the whole thing. So sure. since he's your friend, I don't want to, you know, to cut him loose. Mm -hmm. uh, although right now I'm thinking of cutting him loose because, you know, I talked to him a couple of times telling him, you know, I, I, I am introducing you to this girl. I'm telling you she's my friend. It's so good. And you, five minutes later, you're hitting on her and she's, you know, cutting you down. So uh, right. my question is, I don't know, well, what's, uh, what's your suggestion if you have uh, to deal with this before? Uh, right now, my decision is to, you know, I will cut him loose or uh, I will not invite him as much as I did so he can see, you know, uh, he can get the point and to see if he can sure. actually uh, change his behavior, although I'm not pretty sure if he will. Have you told him that if he doesn't do that, that you're going to stop inviting him to things? Uh, I actually told him, like, you know, uh, in a very easy, friendly way since he's my friend. Like, I, I was telling him, uh, for example, I would tell him, I, w I would tell you an example. The last two times we went out, uh, I introduced him to a couple of female friends of mine. And I told him, you know, I will introduce you to this. Actually, he saw me talking to a couple of girls. And I told him, okay, I will introduce you to these girls. Come on here. And I told him, you know, I, I really like this girl. It's, it's so good. I know it's so good. Uh, she's a friend of mine. Come over. And I, and five minutes later, he was like hitting on those two girls. And he did that twice the same night. And I told him, you know, dude, you're you're funny. You rely on your looks. And these are my friends. You're hitting up on them. What what what's going on? Come on, get a right. grip. And I was telling him like funny. I'm not. I was not pissed at all. But. Uh, since he's doing constantly, you know, and the last time he did it with a couple of friends that, uh, that are friends of mine, and it's so good. It's like, come on, come on. Don't, I mean, you're, he's constantly trying to get a free ride on my back, so that's what actually sure. I'm not good about it. Okay, well, I would say the first thing is you need to let him know that this is a problem, right? Um, that you need to let him know, hey, if, if, you, if you don't stop weirding my friends out, I can't invite you to things because – you're a, a liability, and and you're you're ruining the good time that uh, my friends are having, right? Um, the second thing is, in terms of your decision, what I would ask you is, if you had a friend, say, let's say you worked uh, as a waiter, right, as a server at a restaurant, and you had a friend that came in, and every time he came in, he started a fight in your restaurant, or he would make a mess, or he would he would uh, get into an altercation, to get into a fight with the your other customers, right? How long would it take you before you tell your friend to stop coming to your restaurant? Once or twice, right? At that, if, if it's that. You would very quickly tell him, look, you are jeopardizing my work. You are jeopardizing my career, my livelihood. So I can't have you come into this. Then you would say that probably the first time he did that. The second time, you'd say, look, if you come in again, I'm going to have to ask you to leave. And if you don't leave, I'm going to call the police. And it's not anything personal, but... That's, this is my work, and you are jeopardizing my work. Well, he's jeopardizing your relationships and your social circle, and he's doing that, and he, he doesn't have the respect to, to listen and try to cooperate. It's different if he's trying, dude. If he's trying and he's just a little bit uncalibrated, 
and you can work with him and you can help him and you can say, okay, don't say this or like take it easy. You know what I mean? Just talk normally, don't hit on girls, whatever. And sure, maybe, you know, not every girl will like him, but he's not going to be a liability. He might be dead weight. He might just be a guy that isn't contributing a lot, but at least he won't be a guy that's taking. What you have here is you have a friend who's taking value and he's not giving any value. So if that was work, it would be a very easy decision. If that was an employee, it'd be a very easy decision. The problem here is he's a friend, so you feel like, oh, I can't do that. But at the end of the day, he's still somebody who's taking value and he's not giving any in return. Does that make sense? Exactly. That, uh, have you ever experienced that? I don't know. I'm sure you yeah. did. Uh, Absolutely. And that's what you do. You talk to him and you say, hey, look, I, I know this is not intentional, but you're, you're a liability or however you'd say that in, in whatever the translation would be, right? I'm, I'm assuming you're not from America, right? Uh, no, I'm from South America. Okay, right. What country? Argentina. Okay, got it. So you tell him in Spanish, right? You tell him that, hey, you're, you're a liability, right? You are, you are causing problems. The girls that are around us are not comfortable being around us because you're coming on too strong. And yeah, then, I mean, sometimes, yeah. Sometimes it's sometimes it's that, and sometimes it's. I mean, he's a pretty good-looking guy, so he's a guy that actually rely on his looks too much. But the other thing is that um, he's actually at the end of the night actually cut blocking me. It's like uh, I'm telling you know this is my friend. It's so good, and sometimes he does it on purpose because he actually doesn't give a fuck because if they tell them uh, if he hits on them and it's all right. He will up to the score. If it's not, he gives a fuck that actually uh, she's I, I'm like I know her and that I was actually trying to uh, you know accomplish something. So yeah, I mean I, I agree with you. He's a liability, and at the end of the day, he's actually taking more than what he's right. offering. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean he's a friend, so it's kind of that doesn't mean you don't be a friend with him, right? So if, again, if you're Let's say you had a friend who got really drunk, and you were a bartender, and he would go to your bar and get in fights, and he, you know what I mean? Like, after a while, you would tell him, look, I'm not going to break our friendship, but you can't come to my work anymore and get in fights, because that looks bad on me, and I will get fired letting you in when you get into fights with my staff and my customers, right? So it doesn't mean you can't be his friend, but you have to let him know, this is business, and in this business, I can't be working with you. And you'll have to put your foot down. And if he can't respect e even your wishes on that, then you're going to have to cut him off, at least in terms of socially. All right. Does that make sense? Yeah, crystal clear. Okay. Do you have any other questions? Let me add some real quick. And, uh, and uh, I, I got this fortune cookie one time, and it was when I was touting direct out here in L.A., it said, "Be direct. Usually, one can accomplish more that way." <laughs> it's just not. It's just not in in your love life. It's just not with women, but it's in everything in general. Because when you're not, when you're not clear, in, you know, in what you want and and what you demand from people, things, you know, there creates a lot of drama. And I think that's what's going on in your situation is that you're not saying anything, so it's creating drama. But once you clear that up by being direct and letting him know what you require, or or you know, hey, there's an issue. While that drama is cleared up, and with being direct, sometimes it doesn't, you know, it doesn't work out the way you want to. I mean, everything's not copacetic, but at least there's no more drama after you're done. Yep. You know what's funny, dude? Is uh, my family probably made that fortune cookie. <laughs> <laughs> my uh, my family on my mom's side, uh, they have a fortune cookie factory, like like legit, like no shit fortune cookie factory. Like we can't get any more Asian than this. And uh, they make all the fortune cookies for all the big Chinese restaurants on, like, the West Coast. <laughs> really? Was it Panda? They, because it is Panda. Yeah, no, oh. they, did Panda. they did Panda. Oh, That's one shit. of their biggest clients. So, yeah, yeah. You read a fortune from, like, my aunt or something. Damn, it just goes around <laughs> in circles, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's true. I know. Her job is just to run around fucking making fortune cookies that sound – or fortunes that sound all, like, wise and stuff. That's crazy. All right, guys, so anyone else have a question, go ahead and press star 2 on your phone. We'll take another if you guys question. don't have specific questions on, on like a, in a specific scenario, but you're unclear of a, of a topic, right? Like you don't know how something works. You don't know, like he said, he doesn't know how day game works or direct opening works in day game. 
if you don't necessarily have a question, but you just don't know how something works or you're struggling with a concept, just let me know what the concept is. Just say, hey, I, you know, I don't understand this concept because so-and-so says this and so-and-so says this, or it's just not something I've ever heard before or I, I've read about. What's your take on it? And I'll go through and, and, and we'll go over that concept. Sounds good. Got to go a couple more callers. So let's go to last four is 9054 in Torrance, California. Go ahead and answer your question, man. Hello, this is KJ here. Um, I have a question regarding Meg. I know yeah. uh, in the community they're beginning to advise against Meg, but uh, a lot of people are still teaching it. So I want to uh, see what you guys think about that. You know, what's your perspective or input when it comes to Meg? Good question, good question. Um, so here's, here's the deal with Negs, right? Um, I think I posted this recently. Negs are the flying spin kick of the pickup world. As in, it's a really flashy, well-publicized, like, looks cool move, but how often do you see the flying, spinning, flying back kick in MMA, in like an actual UFC fight? Like, never. I don't think I've ever seen it. Why? Because it's not that useful in day-to-day -day use. It's not that useful in the real world. It's cool to see. Like, it's cool to do. I practiced for like in, – in, I took like 10 years of martial arts. I probably spent a good year and a half just doing that move just because it looks really cool. You do a 360-degree fucking flying spin kick, right? Never, ever used it. Not in any kind of real thing. It just looks cool, right? Not that useful. That's what the neg is. So then here's the reason why. The neg is – and, and yes, it's, it's really politically incorrect. At its core, you can try to dress it up all you want, but what a neg really is, is it's taking that girl down a peg. It's taking that girl's self-esteem down a peg because she thinks she's hot shit. You go up to a girl who's like a Hollywood 10, a girl who like – she walks on water in the club. She goes in the club, and they fucking immediately give her a bottle, right? You go up to that girl, and she thinks she's hot shit, whether she is or she isn't, right? You go up to that girl in a regular Hollywood nightclub, and let's say you don't have a bottle. You don't have a lot of social proof. You're just a well-dressed regular guy. You're one of 30 guys that are going to approach her, right? Even if you have a good game. In Hollywood, everyone's got good game. There's a lot of good-looking guys that are better looking than you have just as a good game, right, or at the same level, right? In that scenario, yeah, you've got to take that girl down a peg because you just – you have to be able to communicate on equal levels. So naturals will do the same thing. Naturals won't call it negging, though. They'll call it talking shit to a girl. I have natural friends. That's, a, that's word for word what they call it. Just talk shit to her, right? Or when the, the guy like, will play asshole game. He'll just kind of be a dick to the girl. Not like a real asshole, like he'll slap her in the face, right? But like he'll make fun of her a lot. He'll like talk shit to her. He'll tease her a lot. And it's not all like – I mean a lot of it's like funny teasing and like playful teasing. But some of it's like he'll, he'll get right in her face and talk shit to her. You know what I mean? You'll see, you'll see that kind of in this bad boy image, right, on TV a lot, right? There's a time and a place to actually use that. Unfortunately, the time and the place is 0.01% of all scenarios because let's be honest. You're in Torrance. You're in California. I'm sure you've been to Hollywood clubs. I'm sure you've been in those environments. How many times in all the approaches have you done have you legitimately gone up and approached a Hollywood 10 who thinks she's a 12? Probably one or tw two times, if that. It's so rare, even in Hollywood, that like, when are you ever going to use this? That's my thing. Yes, when you need to use it, it's a very important skill set to have. However, the percentage of times you're going to need to use it are so few and far between that it's not really worth learning until you're at the really advanced level. It's, it, think of it as like a half-court shot fadeaway in basketball. Like, when are you going to use a fadeaway at the half-court line? Never. I mean, maybe at the buzzer of a guy, three guys are guarding you, and you're down by two, and maybe you got to fade away, I guess. But it's not something I'm going to practice on a daily basis unless I am super pro at dribbling, passing, layups, outside shooting, everything else. Then maybe I might screw around this a little bit. That's what that neg is. So the, the bottom line on that, should you practice it? No, because you're not going to have to use it. Like, the chance that you're going to have to use it is so infinitesimally small – it's not worth it. So the only time I would advise a guy to use it is if he's already really, really good at everything else. If you can pull every weekend, every weekend you go out, you can pull, and, but you're having trouble with the hottest girl in the venue. You're like, I can pull eights. I just can't pull that 10 every weekend. Okay, maybe start incorporating that. If you're anything short of that, don't worry about it because it's mostly a waste of your time. 
Okay. That makes a whole lot of sense. Thank you so much. Okay, great. You're welcome. All right, uh, Live Sports 64. You're on, dude. You got a question? Can you hear me? Yep. Yep. Okay, I have a question about uh, just male to male uh, relationships. Uh, but how important guy, que- like, how important your guy friends are? <laughs> you guys are talking about that? I did not think that was the question. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, yeah. I was like, I do not have any experience with this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, how important are your guy friends? Um, it, as a general rule, dude, it's important. You know what I mean? It's, it's, I mean, but it's the same thing as how important it is to have female friends. It's important as well. It's important because you need to have a, uh, you need to be well rounded. You need to have a, a, a variety of people around you. You need to have um, a good social circle, um, especially if you're if you're learning this and you're a guy who doesn't pick this up naturally, right? If you're a guy like me, and you know this is something that you struggled with a lot in growing up. If you're doing that and you're struggling with this and you're learning and you got into this because of that, it's pretty important to have guys around you that are doing the same thing. Because if you don't have that, what you have instead is a lot of people that either don't know what you're doing or they do know what you're doing and all they're doing is talking shit to you. So like if all the people that know you're doing pickup are just like your teachers and your family and your sister and your like, you know, like guy friends and like whatever here and there, like it's just the, most of those people, even if they don't say it outright, in the back of their head, you know they're looking down on you for this. And it sucks, but that's just how it is. Um, and I – applaud the guys for having the balls say, you know what, I don't care what these people think, even though they're people that are important to me, fuck what they think because this is this is good for me. This is what I need to do. Because that takes a lot of balls when you know that so many people are going to quote unquote look down on you for that. Right? So mm-hmm. it's important to have guys that are supporting what you're doing. To have guys that you're surrounded with that are doing the same things, that are trying to accomplish the same things. Much in the same way that if you want it to be wealthy, don't hang out with poor people. Because you're not going to be wealthy that way. If you want to be wealthy, hang out with people that are wealthier than you because you will pick up so many things or at least people that are on the path to being wealthy, the people that are striving to do it. Because, yeah, they might not be wealthy now, but because you guys are all doing the same things, you're all going to push each other to do the same things. So let's say you know you're, you don't feel like reading an, a book on investing because you instead want to get drunk on the weekends. You hang out with guys that want to be wealthy. They're going to say, I read this book this weekend. Why are you getting drunk? Are you holding me back because you're a guy who, who doesn't really want this bad enough? And so you're not going to bring anything to the table when we go out to dinner and we talk about, hey, so-and-so is into real estate, so-and-so is into stocks, and you, oh, no, you just got drunk on the weekend. You're holding that guy back. So what do you do? You say, okay, i got to step up. I have to now read up on stuff or I have to bring something to the table. And what happens is it makes you better whether that's monetarily or whether that's in dating, whether that's getting better at that. Anything you're trying to do, being around people that are striving to better themselves, being around people that are successful, make you successful. So that's why that's really important. Does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah, let, me, no let me throw in my uh, two cents because um, I think guys help you become guys. You know, it's it's. I know it's kind of woo-woo-ish, but – um, it's kind of that masculine energy that can kind of flows around when you're with other other dudes. You kind of let that sink in and know how you should be when you're around women. And I used to hang out with this guy that we would, you know, call it snapping on each other. You know, about five six years ago, where we just bag on each other, and that helped helped me become more spontaneous with, you know, the uh, the uh, uh, the comebacks that I that I do with women. You know, I believe in a lot of teasing. I don't believe in negs, and if you believe that, then re- just replace it with teasing. That really helped me become a lot better at teasing is just hanging out with guys that, that we could bounce, you know, insults off of each other, if that's how you want to call it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Being able to, to – and, and remember a lot of, with guys, we express kind of our camaraderie by basically talking shit to each other. Not in a – not in a I hate you in a contemptuous way, but in a – I am kind of showing the rapport that we have by joking around, teasing you, right? Uh, and so you see that with if you if you watch any type of fraternity where they're all hazing and screwing around with each other, it's that vibe. And so 
So, I mean, don't hang out with like super effeminate guys because you're not going to get that, right? But when you hang out with those groups of guys, especially guys that are really good at teasing you, they're always giving you shit. That's a good thing, even if it hurts a little bit at the beginning, because that's what's going to allow you to pick up that same level of wit or that same level of, of thinking on your feet to be able to apply that when you're in your own conversations when it's with girls. Yep, and don't take it don't take it personal when guys are giving you shit. Yeah. You should be th- you should be thinking what you're gonna come back with. That should be on yep. your mind at all times. Yep, that's gonna that's gonna make you sharper. Yep. Does that help you out there? That does, yeah. So, with uh with confrontation, should uh should you provoke it yourself just for uh for fun, I guess, for growth? What do you mean confrontation? Yeah, what does that mean? Uh, just like with uh with the teasing and stuff and uh and the and it gets the conflict like that between other guys. Should you pick on it just for fun? Well, I guess? This, well this is the thing. You gotta you, when you said confrontation, that to me sent up a red signal that you might think that teasing can be adversarial. Yeah. Oh, but okay. it it can be fun. Like if uh, you know, let's say what was the last situation I was in? Just just little things like um, when I go out on the weekends with with several wings. And one of my guys, he's got a type, you know, and it's it's a it's a cougar type. So when a, a fifty year old woman with saggy <laughs> saggy breast walks by, you know, you just look at her, hey, yo, yo, Casey, there's, there's your type, yeah, there's yeah, your type exactly. right there, man, go after. You know, that's not that's not adversarial at all. It's just it's just bagging on each other, you know. Yeah. Okay. And then when when you know another another friend of mine he likes young Asian chicks. So when a thirteen year old comes, <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> point out girls with, to him. So that's that's what I'm talking about, you know. And then and then he says something, I say something to him about it. He'll say something back to me, and it's you know it's kind of a play until until the the funny is is gone out of the situation. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the way I look at it, dude, it's it's not confrontational. You're not trying to. You're actually not trying to create a confrontation, and what you're trying to do is you're trying to to laugh together by teasing your guy friends. So you never want to do it with an, an underpinning of I don't like you or you're beneath me or um, there's something wrong with you or I, I, I despise you or I resent you. It's always done with uh, – ironically, it's actually done with a, a mental – state or a frame of um i like you it's done with a frame of you're my boy right so you're teasing them because you want them to laugh you'll never tease a guy on something he's self-conscious about right because he's not going to laugh at that it's just going to hurt his feelings and that's not going to be fun for either of you guys you're going to tease him on something that maybe it's an exaggeration maybe it's ridiculous but something that he's going to laugh at because what's going to happen is you guys are going to laugh together at that and that's the goal of that, for you guys to laugh together, because that's what creates that camaraderie among men. Okay. Okay, sounds good. All you can do is just practice, man. Just get out with the guys that are, you know, are good good with that, and just, you know, you, they might get some good shots in, but it's like, it's like I say with game, it's, it's like playing the video game. You you just get in those situations, your mind adapts, and it learns how to get better. Yep. Okay. All righty. Great. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. All right. So, guys, uh, you can probably take one more question. Uh, like Darren was saying, if you got a situation and you have questions about, uh, you got a sticking point or anything else, go ahead and raise your hand, and we will take your call. <clears throat> okay, we got a Skype user. Last four is 0240. Go ahead and ask your question, man. Wait. Yep, go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, I want to ask something. Um, I have a problem of uh, stopping women while I'm uh, uh, I'm approaching them. Um, yeah. I mean, they don't stop. Okay. Day, night. What where? Is, where are you? What? Daytime, nighttime. The- Ah, it's a it's a daytime. Okay. It's daytime. Now it's nighttime for us. Okay. <laughs> I got you. So okay, you have so you... problems stopping women during the daytime. Yes. Okay. Tell me how yeah. you're doing it. Tell me how you're trying to do it. Um, 
I try to do a c- a cutting the way to get in front of them. Okay. And, and then what do you um, say? Um, I say pretty, uh, pretty canned stuff. Okay. Like what? Because Give me an example. Um, it's a small compliment. Okay. You like look, specifically uh, what? I, I saw you over there, and uh, you look pretty nice to my eyes. And uh, I thought about uh, getting uh, come here and uh, tell you this thing. So okay. my name is this. What, what city? It? What city are you doing that in? What? What city are you doing that in? Uh, excuse me, because I'm not from U.S. Uh, so can you please? Uh, yeah. What? What's, uh, what country? Let's put it that way. Uh, I mean, I come from Greece. Okay, are you doing that in Greece? Yes, yes. Okay, okay. Um, and I'm assuming you're doing that in Greek, right? Or in uh, English? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, in Greek. Okay, got it, got it. Okay, all right, so that, that, that changes things a little. Um, the main thing, dude, is, is what I was telling the other guy about, about approaching during the day. You don't ever want to jump in front of people because when you do that, it usually scares people, A, and B, if they don't get scared, they think you're trying to sell them something. Let's say you're walking down the street, right, and some guy jumps in your way. Your first instinct is he's either dangerous or he's trying to sell me something, right? You don't ever think anything other than that is he's either going to be a pest to me or he's going to sell me something. So when you stop women or you try to stop them by jumping in front of them, you're triggering that same instinct of he's going to be dangerous or he's going to try to sell me something. Neither of those people – the girl wants to stop and talk to. That's why we say instead of jumping in front of them, let them pass you, turn around, and then go chase them down. Now, when you chase them down, I don't literally mean like, you know, run after them and tackle them, right? I mean, let them pass, count to five, turn around, walk a little bit faster, right, than you normally would so that you can catch up to them, right? When you're about six or seven feet away from them, say, hey, excuse me, She'll turn around. As she does, you start to stop. Okay, so she'll turn around. She'll be slowing down a little bit, right? And you're, yeah. as that's happening, you're going to start to stop. After a, a step or so, you're going to be stopped. Now, by you stopping, what's going to happen is she's going to stop instinctively. And you're not going to think this is going to work. In your head, you're going to be like, there's no way this girl's going to stop just because I stopped. And then you're going to do it, if, assuming you do it, and she's going to stop and it's going to blow your mind. You're going to be like, I can't believe she stopped. It's just a natural human instinct. When you stop, you say, hey, excuse me, she's going to stop. At the same time, you, and I learned this from Andy, Andy Yosha, you're going to point behind you as if you're saying you dropped something. And then you're going to say, I saw you over there, and I thought you were absolutely adorable. I had to come meet you. And, and you're going to say that at the same time as you, when you say over there, you're going to gesture behind you. Now, that gesture, what that does – is it temporarily makes her think it, it, it's, she, she doesn't think you're selling her something because nobody who tries to sell her something points back there. The only person who points back there is someone saying, you dropped your wallet back there. So she stops for a second to find out what you're going to say. That gives you enough time to stop. Once you're stopped and she stops, now you have time to run your opener and run it correctly without her instinctively walking off. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. So Thank you, you walk much. past them, chase them down. Yeah. Don't get, if, if, here's the thing. If you open and they jump or they're startled, it always means you're too close. Because if you say, hey, excuse me, and assuming you're not doing this in a dark alley, right? If you say, hey, excuse yeah. me, and you're seven feet away, nobody gets scared because you're too far away. Now, if you say that and you're one foot away, I don't care who you are. It'll scare me. You could be my best friend. It'll still scare me. You're too close. So you say, excuse me, when you're about seven feet away as you're approaching, right? It won't scare her because it's a daytime, it's public, whatever, right? It won't scare her. She'll turn around, she'll see you coming up. You'll point behind you as you stop and say, I saw you over there, and then run into your hole opener, and that'll give you enough time to run that correctly. Does that make sense? Yes. So give it a shot, and uh, and tell me how that goes. Um, 
Find me on Facebook right. if you guys don't have me on Facebook. Uh, find me on Facebook and send me a message and let me know how that works for you. And if, if, it, if it, there's something else going on, let me know what the problem is, and I'll walk you through troubleshooting the next steps. Yes, I will. I will send you a message in uh, Facebook. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. All right, man. No problem. And uh, one okay. one thing that I, I I might add is is what I do and what I see. Um, Darren mentioned Andy Yosha. One thing that they do that I don't agree with is asking a question like, "Can I tell you something real quickly?" I don't believe in asking a question. I, I believe in being a man and saying, "Hey, excuse me, I just want to tell you something real quickly, then I'll let you go." So you might want yeah. to do it not only with your, with your body language but with your verbals. You know, letting her know that you you want to tell her something, you want to stop her, and then you're going to let her go real quick. So try that. Yeah, I think I think direct is the way to go when you're first starting out. If you have the calibration to be able to pull off, I posted something the other day about on the fa- on Facebook about um, you should you should start with direct almost all the time. You shouldn't start with indirect. The only reason we started with indirect back in the day is because we didn't know any better, because no one was doing direct in 2004. So we had to start with indirect because that was the only thing available. Now what we know is you start with direct first because direct gives you strong fundamentals. And if you don't have those fundamentals, it's like trying to do calculus before you've done addition or trying to learn a hook shot before you can make a free throw. Even if you get really good at the hook shot, you can't make the free throw, you're still not that valuable as a team member. So you learn the fundamentals first, and then you can get fancy with adding things on top of that. And that's where direct comes in. Direct is going to give you those fundamentals that we were really lacking back in the day, and we had to go back and learn them. So Does that make sense? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, dude. Well, thanks for your question. All right, Darren. So I want to thank you for uh, joining the call and answer, answering the guys' questions. Why don't you give us a little uh, sneak peek of what you're going to be teaching this weekend at the Open Partners Convention? Uh, well, I'm not going to spoil the surprise, but I'm definitely going to be talking about fundamentals. Uh, and I'm going to be talking specifically about things that you guys aren't aware of that are hurting you. Uh, because it's really easy to talk about you know, things that are just the commonplace, normal things that you're like, oh, yeah, I know i got to do that, whatever, right? But there's a lot of things out there that you're doing incorrectly, and we talked about that a little uh, earlier about qualification. There's a lot of things that you're not even aware you're doing incorrectly, and they're especially the things that aren't blowing you out immediately. They're things that are like – they're just – it's like a slow death it's like a, it just plays you, right? So it doesn't blow you out right away so you don't know, even know you're doing it wrong. It just prevents the set from hooking or prevents it from going anywhere. And then, you know, 20 minutes down the line, it just the set blows up and you're like, well, what happened? Why, why didn't it work? It's because something you did 20 minutes ago. So we'll be focusing in a lot on those things that are kind of eating away at your, at your game early on that you're not aware of. Gotcha. Sounds good. All right, so you guys, if you'd like to attend the Ultimate Pickup Artist Convention this weekend – happening in L.A. the 13th and 14th. Go to upuac.com forward slash discount, and you can get a 10% off discount on admission. Once again, that's upuac.com forward slash discount. We'll have another call tomorrow at 6 with Bravo. Uh, other than that, I will see you guys later. Uh, Take care. Steve, one, one, one thing I'm going to point out. Yep. So I'm going to ruin your closer. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, tomorrow, Bravo saying you guys should all be on that. And here's why, because not only is Bravo good at the game, but there's uh, another thing Bravo's really good at, and it's self-defense. And I know some of you guys are like, yeah, yeah, whatever, right? But Bravo's – both asking him questions and, and in talking to him, uh, I was in the Marines, and when I was in, Bravo was an instructor for, uh, for military and law enforcement. And um, so we know a lot of the same people, and I know a lot of the kind of the, the stuff that Bravo goes over, and he's really, really good at it. He knows his stuff. So maybe in your country they can't have firearms. Maybe it's just knives or maybe it's just general self-defense or maybe it's just being aware and being in that surrounding. But a lot of you guys are going into bars and a lot of you guys are going into environments where there's drunk AMOGs and some of those guys will try to fight you, right? And so go in, definitely jump on that call and and ask Bravo about that because that guy really knows his stuff. And I've learned a lot from him and I know you guys will too. All right. I'll definitely be there. Hopefully you guys will too. So we will end the call. Thank you guys again for coming on, and we will see you tomorrow. See you guys.